Outside of China, the name BBK Electronics might not mean much when it comes to smartphones. But low key, it could be considered one of the world's largest phone makers. BBK gave birth to companies such as Oppo, Vivo, OnePlus, Realme, and iQoo. According to Counterpoint Research, Oppo, Vivo, and Realme sold 262.7 million smartphones in 2020, getting a 19% market share in the global smartphone market, and outperforming giants such as Samsung and Huawei. BBK, however, has maintained a scant public-facing presence, while Oppo, Vivo, Realme, and OnePlus have downplayed their shared history, despite evidence on extensive R&D collaboration and links to BBK. Its founder, billionaire Duan Yongping, rarely gives interviews, and the company's management had almost let its brands exist independently. How much stake or participation BBK holds in these companies is unknown, as they are all private firms. Media outlets, however, have mostly referred to BBK as the owner of Oppo, Vivo, and all the other associated brands. A deeper research into corporate filings shows the existence of different holding companies with ties with BBK and the different phone brands. It remains unclear why BBK obfuscates its connections with these phone brands. A plausible hypothesis is that brands like Oppo, Vivo, and OnePlus want to project an image of independence. BBK was founded in 1995 by entrepreneur Duan Yongping. Duan is dubbed as China's Warren Buffett for his career as a professional financier. In fact, in 2006, he had a lunch with Warren Buffett in New York after winning a charity auction with a bid of around $620,000. He used the opportunity to thank Buffett, whose philosophy inspired him throughout his investment career. Before launching BBK in 1995, Duan served as general manager of Zhongshan Yihua Group. In the early 90s, the company manufactured a budget gaming console alternative to the Nintendo, named Subor, also commonly known as Xiaobawang in China, which proved to be a big hit thanks to a successful marketing campaign, including endorsements from action movie legend Jackie Chan. BBK initially cast its eye on educational devices, audiovisual equipment, and communication gadgets. Thanks to catchy advertising campaigns, celebrity endorsements, and an extensive offline retail network, BBK quickly became a major player in China's electronics market. However, in 1999, when the company's mainstay audiovisual segment was besieged by foreign brands like Sony, Duan spearheaded a restructuring and decided to divide BBK into three separate businesses, audiovisual electronics, education electronics, and communications electronics. Tony Chen, head of BBK's audiovisual division, would go on to found Oppo with Duan Yongping in 2004. The brand started out selling products like DVD and MP3 players, but shifted its focus to smartphones around 2008 with the launch of Oppo's first phone, the Smile Phone. Their primary target were mid-range market consumers, but as the company developed, it started to target the premium tier sector. The brand was notable for its sponsorships, notably having had sponsor agreements with big names in sports, including SC Barcelona, the Indian national cricket team, as well as the French Open and Wimbledon tennis tournaments. Models including the Oppo R9 and Oppo A33 helped the firm gain massive success in China, while the firm also launched its international expansion. In 2020, Oppo shipped 111.8 million devices, taking the first position among BBK brands. In 2013, Oppo launched OnePlus, a sub-brand formed by Oppo's veteran Peter Lau and Carl Pei, which targeted overseas tech-savvy customers with premium specs at affordable prices. The OnePlus One, released in April of 2014, has been known as the flagship killer for its top-tier specs, but selling at half the cost of the iPhone 6 or the Samsung Galaxy Note 4, the leading premium devices that year. It also created a lot of hype around the brand for an invitation-only system to buy it. Despite the price point, OnePlus devices have gradually increased year after year. The firm has developed a strong community of tech-savvy fans around the world. OnePlus is doing quite well, especially in India, where it's only second to Apple in the premium brand category with a 27% market share in 2020, according to recent research from Counterpoint. OnePlus is also popular in the US and Europe. Oppo and OnePlus initially refused to acknowledge their parents' background, despite similarities in product lineups and common investors. But just recently, the two brands announced the merging of their hardware R&D departments. In 2010, Oppo launched a sub-brand called Oppo Real in the Chinese market. The sub-brand was later spun off by Oppo's former vice president, Sky Li, as an independent brand in 2018, called Realme. Realme focuses mainly on foreign markets, 
entering Europe in 2018 and India in 2019. In Q4 of 2020, Realme smartphone shipments ranked top 7 globally. But what's more interesting is that during the same period, it was the world's fastest growing smartphone brand, with a year-on-year -year growth of 80%. What makes Realme stand out in the smartphone market is its cost-effectiveness. In September of 2020, it released the world's cheapest 5G-enabled smartphone, costing less than $150. Vivo was co-founded by Duan Yongping and Shen Wei, former leader of BBK's communication division. The first Vivo smartphone appeared in 2011, and like Oppo, the brand targets the mid-range segment. Yet starting out, Oppo focused more on camera-driven innovations, while Vivo turned to sleek designs and hi-fi audio. In 2020, Vivo shipped around 57.5 million phones in China, edging out sister Oppo for second place, with both brands individually coming behind Huawei. Of brands under the BBK umbrella, Vivo was the second best-selling worldwide in 2020, with 108.5 million units sold, just slightly below Oppo, and with an 8% global market share. The newest brand under BBK is iQ, launched in 2019 as a sub-brand of Vivo, with a focus on high performance for streaming and gaming. In 2020, iQ entered the Indian market, where it will operate as its own entity, though it will share Vivo's India manufacturing facilities. Not much information is available about the new brand, but at the moment, it markets a few devices mainly for the Chinese and the Indian market. Unlike aggressive competitor Xiaomi, these BBK offshoots are still privately held and have no plans to go public. Duan has been reportedly living in California since 2001, after his retirement as BBK CEO. However, the empire he helped create is challenging the likes of conglomerates like Apple and Samsung in the smartphone category, even if most users don't even know about it.